This thing looks like a stone. See? Now, there are two things you need to know about this fish. First, if you confuse it with a rock and step on its spikes, it will poison you and you will lose your leg. That's actually the best case scenario. The stonefish is very economical. It injects the amount of poison proportional to the pressing weight. The second thing is, it takes the stonefish just 0.15 seconds to react to a moving object, another fish, or your leg, to open its mouth and bite it. So losing a leg is really possible. So watch your step whenever you are in the ocean. Now, this frog looks beautiful. It's hard to deny that. However, don't let this beauty deceive you. This frog doesn't even need to bite you to poison you. It has poison on its skin. You see, this is how it works in nature. Whatever is the brightest is the most dangerous. Never touch or even come close to something you want to touch in the wild, including the dart frog. The next seemingly cute little fellow that you should stay far away from goes by many names. The southern flannel moth, the woolly slug, the pus caterpillar. Boy, that's a beauty contest, huh? Well, whatever alias it likes to don, you'll recognize this bug by its luxurious hair-like spines. These furry spines are actually what it uses to protect itself. Contact with this fluffy-looking creature causes almost instant skin irritation, with pain so severe that some people say it feels like getting a broken bone. Along with the pain comes swelling, burning, nausea, headache, blisters, rash, chest pain, numbness, and difficulty breathing. Sounds like an alphabet soup of, no thanks, I'll pass. Now, unless you're allergic, bees aren't usually life-threatening. But that's just about normal bees. As for the Africanized bees, which is a result of crossbreeding the European honeybee with the East African honeybee, they can do some real damage even if you're not allergic. The Africanized bee, also known as the killer bee, is more defensive than other honeybee species, which usually only sting as a last resort. Killer bees react to any kind of threat much quicker than other bees and swarm together to protect their hive meaning that a person can receive up to 10 times more stings than with typical bees. Speaking of bees, another airborne attacker is the hornet. Hornets can be aggressive at the slightest provocation. But just imagine a Japanese giant hornet coming after you. Their sting is so painful that it will send you straight to the hospital. Even if you're not allergic, the stings can still be fatal if enough venom is injected. And if you do have an allergy, well, it's not your day. Anaphylactic shock is ahead. Getting stung 10 times guarantees that a person will need medical attention. In the rare but possible case of being stung more than 30 times, a patient will require emergency medical treatment. This might come as a surprise, but there's no mistake here. Cherry trees can be extremely dangerous, especially for small children and dogs. The cherry tree's relatives include peach, plum, apricot, choke cherry, and other trees of this kind. All of them release particular chemicals that later metabolize into cyanide. If we talk about cherry trees in particular, you can find these chemicals throughout the plant, especially in high concentrations on fallen and wilted leaves. If a child or dog eats just one or two of this tree's leaves, they'll suffer from a horrible stomach ache. This is one more tree we bet you never suspected of presenting any sort of danger. But in fact, it's quite a threat. All parts of the Ohio buckeye tree contain saponins, which are chemicals that depress the central nervous system. Little kids, as well as pets, love playing with the brown shiny buckeye nuts that fall onto the ground. Just make sure that your little ones don't put them in their mouths. Pets may have trouble breathing or start to stagger and shake. If you have an Ohio buckeye tree near your house, your best and safest bet is to pick up all the nuts and twigs and keep them out of your kids' and pets' reach. Some more shocking news! Good old trusty apple trees aren't so trusty after all. They can be poisonous to different mammals, such as cats, dogs, and people. The thing is that just like the cherry tree, the leaves, stems, and seeds of this tree contain that very same chemical that's metabolized into cyanide during digestion. Again, 
Fallen leaves are most dangerous than those still attached to the branches. But the biggest amount of the chemical is in the apple seeds themselves. Of course, you're unlikely to swallow 200 seeds or munch on 20 apple cores, which is the fatal dosage for people. Zillaria grows on tree stumps and sick trees that have already started to rot, feeding on their juices and leaving the rest to bacteria. They're completely harmless, but if anyone's interested, they're inedible. Although, they'd probably make a nice addition to Halloween decorations. And if you throw in a bunch of octopus stink horns, your spook party will certainly be a heartbreaker. Octopus stink horn is a fungus too, but where Zillaria retains a bit of human in appearance, this one looks like something from another dimension, that of unspeakable horrors. It begins with an egg, a greenish leathery sac in which the fungus grows until it's ready to burst. Then it falls apart, revealing the horrid blood-red tentacles oozing dark green or black goo. And if that wasn't enough to send chills down your spine, the mushroom also reeks of rotting meat. This way, it attracts flies that carry its spores around, giving birth to other monster eggs. While you're slowly backing off from this otherworldly creature, make sure you look back too and don't stumble upon another similarly terrible thing the jackal food plant. It spends most of its time underground, feeding off other plants in the vicinity. But when it breaks through the layer of soil, it immediately starts blooming, opening up in what's best described as a blind, triple-jawed reptilian beast. To make matters worse, it also stinks of rotten meat, attracting flies and dung beetles, so that more of these plant parasites could sprout everywhere. But if you hope to locate the jackal food plant by the smell, First make sure there's no Titan Arum nearby. The plant ominously nicknamed Corpse Flower is actually quite pretty to look at. It's a huge green flower rising up to 10 feet, as tall as a brown bear on its hind paws. Still, you aren't likely to marvel at its beauty for long, because it emits a powerful smell of rot. Flies and other insects of not very discriminating tastes love this odor and pollinate the plant with gusto. I'll perfectly understand it if you run away screaming from all this stinking nightmare. But remember this, the trees have ears too, and they'll hear your cries. Oracularia is yet another species of fungi that look like human body parts, only this time it's ears. These are jelly mushrooms that grow on trees and feed on them. A grown-up fungus takes the shape eerily resembling a human ear attached to a tree trunk. At a closer look though, it's darker and more translucent. Even more, you can safely cut a dozen of them off the tree and take them home to cook. These shrooms are safe to eat. <clears throat> Ear soup, anyone? Australia is widely known to be a home for tons of dangerous creatures, and the Sydney funnelweb spider, Atrax robustus, is certainly one of the scariest. The length of its body ranges from 0.4 inches to 2 inches, and they can be very frequent guests of your pool or garage. Interestingly, general spider world rules don't apply to Sydney funnel-web spiders, since it's the males who are most active and in charge here. Their bites are extremely painful thanks to the acidic pH of their venom. Plus, their fangs have no problem penetrating human skin. The good news is that as soon as you get to the hospital, you'll receive an antidote. But don't let that calm you down. The Sydney funnel web's venom takes a toll on your body very quickly, so the earlier you get to this antidote, the better. Let's take a little break from all those extremely dangerous spiders and just look at the way this spider buries itself. Kinda cute, right? Well, it was actually Hexophthalma, the six-eyed sand spider getting ready to catch its prey. This spider's body can reach up to 0.6 inches in length, and its legs are usually about 2 inches long. Six-eyed sand spiders aren't that aggressive either, but if they decide to attack, it's better to run away as quickly as possible since toxicology studies show that this spider's venom is the most poisonous out of any spider. Six-eyed sand spiders prefer to live in deserts, so they don't bite people often. The spider with the poetic name of Phonutria, Brazilian wandering spider, is definitely not to be messed around with. Not only is it naturally aggressive, but it's also not one inch or two inch, but six inches in size. These guys mainly live in tropical South America, but sometimes they can be found in Central America as well. 
In general, Brazilian wandering spiders are lazy throughout the day and prefer to start their quest to find prey at night. And believe us, if you come across this spider, you surely won't forget it. This beast may have a funny name, but it doesn't get any less powerful or dangerous even when people laugh at it. It comes from Madagascar, but is not even remotely as cute as the lemurs we all love. It can grow 8 feet tall and 8 feet wide in no time. It spreads quickly, and its claws are sharp as razors and highly toxic. So beware and ask for help if you see it somewhere near you. Fraxinella, also known as burning bush, dittany, and gas plant, thrives in the warm climate of southern Europe, North Africa, and most of Asia. 16 to 39 inches tall and looking sweet and innocent, it is hiding its killer nature behind the little flowers. You can touch and not feel anything, but after a day, you will see and feel the burns and bubbles, which will make you feel weak and hot. Fluffy alpacas may seem warm-hearted, but they still have ways of defending themselves. They can spit up to 10 feet, and you don't want that stuff getting in your eyes because it contains stomach acid, along with chewed-up grass. They can bite with their sharp fighting teeth that are at the back of their mouths, and they have soft toes to give enemies a good kick. They can't really do more damage than you might get in a fight with a child, but it's best not to upset them. There are three things that brings out the nasty side of a Tasmanian devil. When there's a predator nearby, when they're competing for a mate, and when they're protecting their meal. Also Bugs Bunny, but that's a cartoon. These guys normally feed on insects, birds, frogs, and fish, and they like scavenging more than hunting. But if you intrude upon their home for any reason, be prepared for a painful bite. Their teeth are strong enough to eat through bones. Elephants are so clever that they understand the feelings of other elephants, and they even try to help each other. They can also take revenge on people who upset them. Elephants sometimes block roads and show up in the villages of people who have been mean to them. Male elephants get especially aggressive when fighting over females. Watch out for those huge feet, they can really do some damage. Better pack your trunk! Pufferfish can inflate to several times their normal size to protect themselves against predators. Hey, my brother-in-law can do that too. Eh, just kidding. Most animals shouldn't try eating them anyways. There's enough poison inside them to finish off 30 people, and there's no antidote. So, if it's just you, you'll need to invite some friends along to spread out the poison. Nah, I just made that up. Swans tend to see humans as the biggest danger to their homes and families. Male swans get especially aggressive during the spring nesting season from April to June. When kayakers, rowers, or anglers get too close to their nests, swans start hissing and flapping their wings. If you don't pay attention to these warning signs, the swan might even try to flip your boat over. Dolphins are the only species on the planet, apart from humans, that can take another creature's life for no logical reason. Males sometimes attack female dolphins or even baby ones, and they don't do it for food. If an angry dolphin chases you, you have no chance of outswimming it. They can move at 22 miles per hour. The top speed of Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps is only 6 miles per hour, so he can't help you. Slow lorises are the only venomous primates in the world. They carry poison in their elbows. It's transferred to their mouths during grooming to protect their babies. Plus, they scare off predators like pythons and eagle hawks using special markings that show how fearsome they are. If a slow loris bites a person who ends up on its territory or annoys it, the result can be rashes, anaphylactic shock, or, you know, even worse. If you're at the ocean shore and see the water retreat from the beach at breakneck speed and leave behind bare sand, run away as fast as you can. This sudden outflow is likely a signal a tsunami is on the way. Your life will depend on how fast you react. If you spot an almost imperceptible rise in sea level, it can be another sign of an approaching tsunami. This phenomenon happens in 40% of cases. The incoming water is the first tsunami wave. 
The next one, way, way larger, comes in about 10 minutes. If you notice seawater bubbling, swirling, or creating bizarre patterns, it's a sure sign a tsunami's coming. While you're sailing, there might be sharks circling around. Keep an eye on them. If these predators suddenly leave you alone and head for deep water, it might mean a hurricane is drawing closer. Get back to dry land as fast as you can and warn others. If you see weirdly shaped trees that look like the letter J and grow on a slope, the ground under your feet might be unstable. Don't put your life at risk by wandering around. It can provoke a bad landslide. If your hair suddenly stands on end when you're outside, it can mean a lightning storm is near. Head inside immediately, otherwise a lightning bolt can hit you. Another sign a lightning strike is inescapable is a metallic taste in your mouth. Your palms become clammy, and you feel pinpricks all over your body. You have just enough time to get indoors or, at least, stay away from tall objects. An ocean swell up to 6 feet often means a hurricane is coming. But remember that this swell can happen 3 days before the hurricane arrives. The nearer it is, the larger the waves are. In the end, they can reach a height of 15 feet. If during periods of heavy rains, you hear a roaring sound in the distance, it might be a flash flood moving in your direction. If so, you have no time to waste. Move away from that place as fast as you can. Flash floods are oftentimes lethal. Bees can predict heavy rainstorms. These insects begin to work much harder the day before it starts raining.